you just don't know my story, but you have a story too. I thought that that song was so appropriate for today and just um, a real song of gratitude for where we are and why we are here. Welcome, welcome to Journaling for the Generations, the club, the group, the movement. Um, my name is Amber Blakes, and this is our flagship room, sharing gems from our journals and for the foreseeable future by um, <laughs> instruction of God, this is going to be the last room um, of this room um, for the foreseeable future. I'm excited to, in the month of April, seek God's face and instructions to see what updates he has for this space and um, some sort of sharing, gathering, opportunity from our journals that will be an update to this room. Um, but this room as it currently exists is actually one year old. We started last year on March 26, 2021 and have experienced so much breakthrough. We have shared so much insight. We have poured out so much emotion from the pens um, from what our pens have written in our journals, whether it came from our hearts and minds or whether they were downloads directly from God, um, this place and this space has been blessed beyond compare. And I'm so grateful. Um, welcome again to Tammy. Welcome to Glenda. Welcome to Natasha, Ladora, and Stephanie. And welcome to our guest today, who is hardly a guest to this space. <laughs> you guys see her face more than you see mine, and I am not mad about it. I am grateful. Um, I will just say, um, today, Tiffany Ruffner is our guest speaker. However, I would love for any of you to come up on the stage, whether you have a share or not. Apparently, it tricks the algorithm and clubhouse when more people are on the stage and it it pops up on people's hallways higher so that um, it's more visible for people to come on in. Um, welcome to Facebook. We are on Facebook Live in our Facebook group. We are there and we are searchable, even though it is a private group. Um, so if you're with us on Clubhouse and you want to have access to the live replay, it's in the um, Facebook group. But the uh, link above my head in Clubhouse, the link tree is um, the link to everywhere we're available for Journaling for the Generations, our IG page, our Facebook page, our Telegram chat, which is a great space where we um, talk back and forth with each other and share ideas and encouragement. Um, and the chat in this room in Clubhouse is also open, so you're welcome to go over there too. But I'm just so thankful that you all are here. And um, remember, what's in your journals is not just for you. Doesn't matter if it's old or new. Um, if you guys have a share today, we would love to have you up on stage. Or if you're not able to speak, if you want to either back channel it to me or Tiffany or type it in the comments on Facebook, I'll be looking at all those many places or even in the Telegram chat or in the Clubhouse chat. There's a lot of going on here, y'all. <laughs> but I'm grateful um, for the experience. Um, let's see. Hopefully the technology works and all the audio is clear. Tiffany, why don't you come off the mic and say, hey. Hello. Hey, good. We can hear you. There aren't any echoes. I'm so grateful for that, that we don't have any hangups. Can you hear us clearly? I can. Oh, that's really good. Okay. I hear you. You hear us. We are good to go. Okay. okay wonderful. So, um, Miss Tiffany Ruffner, the host of Quiet Scripture and Journaling Room, which happens Monday through Friday. And I'll let you talk more about that as part of our discussion today at um, 7.35 a.m., where we spend 15 impactful minutes um, praying, going into the scripture, and journaling through what God highlights to us in prayer and in scripture that day. Um, and that has just be be developed beautifully over time. And I have a feeling you'll get to tell us more about that. But right now, Tiffany is here, not just as a host um, of a room or live in this um, club, but also as our guest to talk to us about her journaling journey, her life's journaling journey. So go ahead and share what you feel led to share with us about that, Tiffany. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. 
And hello to everyone inside of Journaling for the Generations on Clubhouse and inside the Facebook group. I am so um, honored to be here today inside of this space and to um, share my journey. Um, so I have been, I guess, journaling on and off throughout my life. Um, my aunt, I believe, is the first person that gave me a journal. And I used to write in a diary. But um, as time went on and as I got older in my life, um, I, I guess my salvation when that time came, which was in my early 20s, um, yeah. I think I began to start. I was here and there, like kind of writing inside of a journal. Um, but, you know, over time, I noticed that the Lord would speak through scripture or respond to me through scripture. So I felt like that was um, really, really good and just to hear from him. Um, more times than not, I was journaling from a place of just letting out all my emotions and um, just kind of like what's going on and just getting it out that way. Um, I was a, I started blogging in 2004. <laughs> um, it was very early, like when blogging kind of first started um, because I saw it as an online journal and so I just was just typing away. <laughs> um, and, but I found it as my uh, first space that inside of Black Planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found it as my first space to share Christ. I was a new believer. Um, and it just it just seemed like because I'm an introvert and I didn't really talk to people. I was like, well, I want to share Christ because I felt like he was making an impact in my life and I want to share him. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I started doing it. And um, so journaling for me has been kind of like that thing where I've shared it online with others. And then I also done it with myself. So or privately. And um, I think that with when Amber came on Clubhouse with journaling journeys and us sharing our journals and our gems um, from our journals, I was like, well, how come I can't find anything? I did like the mm -hmm. previous year in 2020, I was like, I'm going to be consistent in journaling. And I kept journaling every day. I was, I said for 100 days, I'm going to journal. And so I would do day one, day one of 100, day two of 100, day three of 100. And then day four, I would forget. <laughs> So I would start back at day one. I'd be like day one or 100 day two. Wow. I think the highest I got up to was wow. maybe like 60 something days. Um, and then I started back over. But I did it until I finished that journal book. And I was like, oh, my goodness, it's complete. I know I did at least 100, even though it wasn't like consecutively. <laughs> um, and so that was kind of like my journey there. But when she, when Amber came with this platform, I was like, I want to be able to find journals to share. So <laughs> I was asking her because I, I posted um, inside the group once in the Telegram chat, someone's um, scripture for the month. And what happened was I took the scripture that that person had, I think it was in the month of May. I took that scripture and then I applied it to prompts that I heard in inside of another clubhouse room um, inside a kingdom business network. And it was amazing the response that I got from God. And I was like, oh my goodness, let me just share what happened. I just wanted to share it with others. But as time went on, I just I just asked Amber, is it okay if I do a scripture and quiet journaling room inside of your club? And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, I, it has to be. Like, I just, just felt that it had to be this way. And so it wasn't because I just felt like, oh, I'm so grandiose and I know about scripture. I don't. I just was like, I want to be consistent. I want to share. Uh, I want to share with others so others can come along. Um, if they're having trouble journaling, they could come in and grab the scripture from today and journal. So um, that's just kind of like where we are now inside of that. And it's so funny because now I've had so much breakthrough in like whenever I have questions and like just response about life, I just ask God, I journal. I'll just go and be like, okay, Lord, and I'll journal and get a response from him. So I think it's it's caused a breakthrough for me just inside of that. And I'm I'm just grateful to be here. So thank you, Amber. 
You're welcome. And I I feel like I'm more grateful that you're here. <laughs> so I'm going to um, uh, touch on a few things that you said. But the first thing I want to say to our audience on Clubhouse and Facebook, um, and welcome, Carlisha. I see that you've joined us and we have one more viewer on um, Facebook. I'm not sure who you are, but um, give us a comment so we can see who you are and um, welcome you. When Tiffany um, asked to sh have a place to do journaling and to share in this club, and I said, are you sure? <laughs> it's because I was dealing with, I think, what's called the DIY syndrome, where I had a, an idea that was God-inspired. I was nervous to do it because I wasn't sure that I would show up consistently honestly, but I felt like it was time for me to walk in obedience. So I did it anyway. And um, not too long after walking that out, did somebody come along to help me? So I, I really consider you, Tiffany, one of my destiny helpers, because um, you were able to come alongside me and carrying out this God idea in a way that I didn't have the capacity to do, but you had the capacity to do. And when we were able to sort of match what we did together, it created a more complete, sturdy platform and a more mainstream message. Um, and that I don't believe that I could have done on my own. So I'm really grateful for you. And I just want you guys to take that with you, that if you have a God idea, um, God will honor you with people to come alongside you after you obey. Um, and maybe not immediately because it was a few months in between, but it was still um, something that he honored me with because I believe I honored him by doing the thing. So um, one of the things that I wanted to you to like elaborate on or talk about more is how you notice that God spoke to you through scripture, like as an early Christian, that is a honestly sort of a big idea. Like that's, that's, that's like on the level of things you do in this walk with Christ, hearing God speak to you through scripture is something that I don't know that everybody has um, a skill for, a knack for, or an understanding of. So how did you know that God was answering you through scripture early in your walk with Christ? I don't even know if I know how to explain that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like I would ask a question or something was going on in my life mm -hmm. and it was like the response was right there. Mm -hmm. Like I would read the scripture and I'm like, oh, wow, this is what he's saying to me. Um, and I just accepted it as that because that's how people, um, leaders that I would learn from said that he speaks, he speaks through his word. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well. That must be him answering me. And I wasn't, I didn't do like, like some people were like, oh, just open up the Bible. Your answer will be there. It wasn't like that, yeah. but I don't know. I would always get kind of like a, um, I don't know. I just think it was Holy Spirit led. <laughs> That's all I can say. Right. I don't, you know, I, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in when I went down for, I just went to the church. I just went to the church for prayer. Like I went down to the front for prayer and somehow I got baptized in water in the Holy spirit. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. And I just was like, okay, we're doing this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he's been leading me and a lot of times I didn't know it was him. Like I would have all of these feelings and it was be stuff that I'm feeling going on. And I'm like, what is this? I don't know. And I, sometimes it was like warnings, like you need to stop what you're doing right now because you're, you know, you know, you're wrong. It's not lining up my word type of thing, but I wasn't even reading my word yet. Like I was a new member, but I didn't want to attend new member classes. Mm -hmm. So I kind of was like, uh, you know, <laughs> just kind of going to church kind of thing. But Holy Spirit was definitely with me. And I was just like, what's going on in my life? Like, what are these things happening? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, anyway, um, so I guess it, it was just him. It was him leading me. Mm -hmm. And that's all I can ex explain it as. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. And that's real. Um, and so one, the one of the reasons why I wanted you to elaborate on that is so that everybody who's listening can one, 
know that if that does not happen for you, you can believe for it. Like, and I think a lot of us in this room, I, I see who's with us. And I don't think I need to repeat this because we're all people who value hearing the voice of God. But one of the things I've learned in this journaling journey for me is that he speaks in so many more ways than I imagined. Um, and for some people, they they see um, a specific word for them in scripture. Some people have a knowing. And I, I think you you told me that before, that you're a knower. <laughs> some people hear an audible voice that sounds like their voice, but not like their words. Some people have a knack for um, like beauty and aesthetics. And so they see visions and um, some people, um, you know, see God in art and in media and in music. And so there's just so much. And so I like that you highlighted that that is how you heard from God. I appreciated you saying that your journaling was just a way to get things out because we go deep here and we don't go deep here. So for example, journaling for the generations, we value scribing, period, um, to get out what's in our heart, what's in our mind, but then also going further and getting quiet and allowing the Lord to speak to us about what we're writing about so we can get his perspective, however he speaks it to us, and then to write that down. But you take it, you took it further, and I've said this before about how important it is to publish what we write. That is those things that are for us, not for others. I mean, for others and not maybe just private for us, but you started blogging in 2004. You got on it from the beginning. Like you saw, so, how do you like describe knowing the value of writing down, typing down in a place where other people could benefit from it? Like, can you talk about like how you had that knowing that you needed to do that? It actually was another believer. Um, mm. She started a blog. I, I found her on Black Planet and she started a blog and I clicked on like the link on her Black Planet page and it took me to her blog. And I was like, what is this, an online journal? <laughs> like, I just didn't know what it was, but she was like literally sharing Christ and like her journey. And it would be so interesting, like the way that she told stories. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> and I just did it. I didn't mm -hmm. even know like what to do. I just like went to the account and set it up and just started doing it. Like I didn't like, there was like no resistance for me. I just was like, okay. I think the first thing that I shared was um, an experience that I had actually is not it wasn't the first experience that I had, but I went back and posted that as the very first thing. But it was an experience I had with my father. I was in this, um, what they call a chastity ceremony. And we were like, we were mentees and we all went up to like, um, part of it was like, we do a foot washing before we made a vow. So we did the foot washing. But that time they were like, oh, can, um, ask your moms or whatever. And my mom, she lived out of state. And my grandmother, she's like, I can't go. And my mom was like, why don't you ask your dad? And I was like, I, it, it just kind of like, I was like, my dad? And I asked him and he said, sure, daughter. And he came and I'm telling you, like, when I started washing his feet, the Holy Spirit fell on me and oh, I couldn't, wow. like, I was literally like, I can't even explain it. Like, this was like the most highest experience I've ever felt. And I just kept saying higher, 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 higher. I didn't know why I was saying that. And then I heard a late, because I felt like I was about to pass. I said, in my head, I'm saying to like, Lord, please send somebody, because I'm about to pass. I was too heavy. And then I heard a lady out, out on the side. She's like, we need intercessors over here now. And I was like, and they all came and started interceding. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. That was like the most special experience ever. And I just think like, the Lord did lead my mom to say that so mm -hmm. that I could ask my dad and, you know, definitely help him on his journey um, when he was alive. So, yeah. You said a mouthful with that whole story. I I can, I can think of about five lessons you just taught us in that one <laughs> story, that one anecdote. But what's beautiful is you wrote it down and you put it somewhere for someone else to benefit from. So if, perhaps there was somebody who was having strife with their dad and, or if there's somebody who didn't understand um, praying, speaking in tongues or, you know, it, or just somebody like, I'm just interested in a chastity ceremony. Like I'm not familiar with that. So I'm like, I'm learning something new, you know? So the, I'm so grateful that you had the mind to do that. 
um, because so many of us have those stories or we have them those stories in our journals, but they are nowhere for anybody else to benefit from after we've written them down. So um, the fact that somebody else did it and that's all it took for you to be motivated to do it is all it should take for us to be motivated to do it. Because I could even just tell looking at you and listening to you that the emotion is still attached to that memory for you. Um, but man, it might have just been a memory if you didn't have that other believer motivate you on to write it down. Um, and then it just blessed at least 10 people today right now in this moment and whoever else is going to replay. So you guys, I think you understand the importance of this. You know, when I um, started this platform last year, you know, I, 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 it was not my intention to help people journal. Like I, that's never anything that I ever thought I would do. Even though, you know, I am an educator by profession, I have helped, helped people write, but I've never gone on this path, didn't see myself going on this path. And a lot of people, I hear them say, oh, Amber, journaling is your thing. And I was like, uh, not really. It just kind of became my thing. But it's about more than journaling. It's about what we just experienced with Tiffany telling her story and what that did for me, what that probably did for you all. Um, but it came from another believer telling their stories in a place where other people could see it. Um, I have a blog. I actually started one back in 2019. I'm in the middle of updating it. Um, but, you know, when I went back into some of the old content, I thought to myself, this is really good. And I, um, out of the blue, got a message about a month ago from WordPress that said, there have been a thousand views of your blog. Now, I don't know who's looking at my blog. I don't know <laughs> if any of them are scam or spam. But what I'm realizing is, and, and I know that's not a lot of views for the years, but that many eyes have looked at what I've written and who knows what kind of influence they might have had. So um, the way that you said that you journal privately, but also online, I just really think that that's a, a good point worth driving home. So the next question I wanted to ask you is um, what has been a result or results of your journaling journey? Um, and when I say that, like what has come from like, have you been able to create anything or have you had any, well, I've, you just talked about breakthrough, <laughs> um, any other breakthroughs or insights that has come from this? I can think of a few things you've told me, but I'd love for you to share what's on your mind today. I'm not even, oh, okay. I'm trying to think right now. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't know, the first thing that's coming to my head is like, oh, you know, and not to make it about um, people hooking up or wanting to get married, but I'm thinking about that. <laughs> I'm thinking about how, um, and that was also something else, like I just joined the women in the community on a prayer line and they were like, we're praying for our husbands. And then I guess some of the single women asked if they could pray for their future husbands. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, sure, come on. And so I think I started doing that and we did like communion. And so I had like, I wrote out like prayers while I was doing that and I would take my communion and it was just a very good experience. And I brought somebody like one of my coworkers along on that too. So it was just like a really good experience. I think like when we share mm -hmm. those type of things, it, it, one, it benefits um, other people's lives and it benefits the kingdom of God because now if you're thinking about family, because that's, you know, marriage is starting the family, that's a foundation, and you're thinking about doing it right with God, then that whole, that brings like a whole nother level and helps the kingdom of God and to influence the kingdom of God. So I think that's one of my shares. Yeah, definitely. And I can think of a few other things. I know that you've told me that it's helped with consistency, like making sure you showed up every day to do this for yourself. Um, a while bringing other, others along with you. That's big. That's big because I actually, um, maybe with an exception of a day or two, have actually journaled every day this year in 2022. And it, it, a lot of it has to do with a program that I'm in called Purpose Filled Prayer with the Prayerapist, Destiny Thomas. If any of you guys connect with her, you won't regret it. And so that's part of that, a requirement for that program. But I feel like the consistency in my journal has flowed over into consistency and in other things like going to the gym, like 
my dishes and my laundry. Like, no lie, <laughs> the consistency is overflowing into places where they weren't consistent. So um, I'm grateful for that. I remember you did talk about how that that was something that was a fruit of your journaling. Um, did you want to say anything about that? Or are you just agreeing? Yeah, I'm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm agreeing. Um, no, the Lord um, showed me. What was it? Maybe last Friday that um, I'm a consistency coach. <laughs> so that's why. It's Hold like, up. <laughs> Sign me up right now. Wait a minute. I just asked you if there was any results from your journaling. And you were like, I can't think of any. And then like two minutes later, you're like, oh, y'all, I'm a whole consistency coach. <laughs> That's huge. That's major, Tiffany. That's exciting. Um, share about that if you want to, or maybe that's for later. But um, <laughs> that's amazing. You would be so good at that. I am a consistency coach. You just said that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, it's it's that's what I felt like. I said, like, the Lord took me around five corners, up three mountains and down and <laughs> back around. And then he's like, okay, this is what you are. I was like, oh, okay. Well, why you didn't tell me that in the beginning? It's like, oh, because you need to. Oops. Hang on. I'm back. I'm sorry. Oh, goodness. I'm back. I'm sorry. I, I just took myself out of the clubhouse room. Um, but you said God took you around and then finally revealed what? Can you repeat that one more time? No, it's just like, it's what made me think about, I was thinking about the children of Israel and that whole 11 days, supposed to be an 11 day journey. And, but. <laughs> 40. <laughs> 40 right. years <laughs> and so and the funny thing about it is is that i keep using the number 40 on all the stuff that i'm doing like my book has 40 in the subtitle um it's it's just like 40 but 40 started being highlighted to me when i was turning 40 like when i was around 39 he just kept showing me 40 40 40 and i'm just like well am i supposed to be doing something big on my birthday like i kept thinking about that i wasn't thinking like spiritual or anything like that but um it makes sense i'm grateful yeah <laughs> i just put up a banner on, oh i just put up a banner on facebook to announce that tiffy is a consistency coach so now i just feel like i'm gonna well let me stop and reset and then i'm gonna go ahead and share um welcome to journaling for the generations club group movement this is our flagship room sharing gems from our journals and it is actually the last of this room and so i'm so grateful for tammy natasha ladora carlisha stephanie nakia gwinnett who have joined us um, and for who, those of you who have joined us on Facebook, I see some have come and some have gone. Um, Tiffany Ruffner is our um, guest speaker today. She's speaking about her journaling journey and the results that have come from her journal. Um, but I would love for any of y'all on the stage to come on up, um, whether you have a share or not, if there's just anything on your heart, anything in your journals, or if you just want to hang out, up, hang out with us on the stage to, uh, hit the algorithm and clubhouse and show more people, um, you can um that the room is going in the hallway because we're at the point now where i'm going to ask tiffany if she's ready to to share something from her journal um and i do see you let's see ladora is gonna come on up as well um there we are okay i feel like things in clubhouse have moved around just a little bit i see that we've got some chats from carlisha i believe she is celebrating <laughs> your announcement tiffany even though i don't know if you meant to announce it <laughs> um and i'm just gonna um toot your horn really quickly before we um welcome queen, queen ladora to the stage um you also for your quiet scripture and journaling room have published a journal that goes with the room. And um, I have it and I love it. And um, it's it's beautiful. So you, you've created quite a few things in your journaling journey and I'm excited for you. Um, how did that, the journal you develop evolve? Oh yeah, so <laughs> I was getting to the end of another journal and I there's certain things how I like to look a certain way. And I was like, I couldn't find what I was looking for. And 
even still visually, like I didn't create the way that I see it in my head, but I was just like, I just want to do something. And so I just started creating it. And I was like, okay, let me put this up. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Maybe I should put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it is very cool. And I'm glad you put it out there. And if those of you all who are interested in having that journal, um, so that when you're able to join the quiet scripture and journaling room, you have the template that actually the room actually follows. Um, if you go to any of those live replays in the Facebook group, Tiffany always posts the link to that journal. Um, it's about 50 pages or so. Um, it can be printed a page at a time, or you can, you know, get it printed and bound at Staples or something like that. All right. One of the delivery stores like UPS or FedEx or Kinko's or something like that. Um, but yes, that is something that is available in this community to this community. And I suggest you grab it because it really doesn't matter when you jump into the room because the template is just there for any room that you're able to jump into. So um, whether you're watching it live or on the replay or um, you're just starting or you're going back. Okay, so I'm going to welcome Ladora to the stage, one of our other moderators of the maintenance required room. If you guys um, would please put on your calendars Wednesday evenings right now at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time to come on back to the club and listen in to Ladora's room from her maintenance required journal. You will be blessed. I'm just going to shout you out and um, mute my mic and allow you to um, tell us what's on your heart or in your journal. Hey, hey, y'all. Happy Thursday. First, I just wanted to say congrats on one year. Um, this space that you've created has definitely blessed me. Um, and I'm excited that God has given you the vision to create and just allow us to be able to share our journals. Because I don't think I don't think if this was a, was created, I don't think I would have shared anything in my journal. It just kind of would have been like there. <laughs> but to actually be in a place where um, I can actually share that, and it goes beyond just like you know, Ladora's uh, book or her my mm -hmm. journals. Um, I'm, I just feel extremely blessed, and I just wanted to just come hang out and just say you truly blessed us. Thank you. I'm sure that you know I I speak for not just myself but a lot of other people on how this has blessed me um, spiritually, physically, emotionally, um, and I'm just excited about what God is about to do through you um and then tiffany also love your rooms in the morning when i can when i'm up because y'all on a different time zone than i am but i just think you all both are doing a great job and i just know for me journaling save my life i say it all the time it saved my life um it allows for me to be able to get out everything that i need to get out and i'm just excited for where we are headed um in this new season that god has us in so that's all i wanted to share just come hang out a little bit Hey, hey, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your kind words. I receive it all. Glory to God. Um, and I am grateful that um, that I did what he said. <laughs> just to be real simple, just just to keep it real simple, um, because there's there's times that I've missed it. I'll be honest. And there's times that I still miss it. But what I find is when I don't miss it, the blessings are um, but uh, they're abundant. So I am extremely grateful for this group. I mean, I know that our rooms and our um, lives are generally small and intimate spaces, but no less powerful or impactful. Um, and thank you. I'm thankful for all of this technology that allows us to go back and watch replays or listen to replays so that it's content that's available for all of us going forward um, if we ever need to revisit any of it. Um, so I appreciate your words. Um, I'm excited too. And I just can't wait to see what the future holds. Um, so I'm going to turn the mic back to Tiffany. Tiffany, do you have a excerpt from your journal that you'd like to share today? Yeah, I sure do. Okay. Um, this is from January of last year. Okay. Uh, January 8th. Um, and it's the Lord speaking to me, so I'll just read it. <laughs> Daughter, I want you to truly understand what it means to slow down. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to fill everything up and then rush to get things done. I want you to find true peace and rest. Stop trying to go, and that's in quotation marks, 
and be on a schedule, quotation, end quote, all the time. The reason you slowed down from being on a job was not so that you would put yourself on the same type of schedule. Flowing and living by the spirit is to do just that, not from an anxious and stressed place, but from a place of obedience. You can't tell others to rest and you haven't learned how to. I don't want you to hustle. I want you to be in focus flow. Follower of Christ under submission, eternally driven. Wow. Okay, so I got questions. <laughs> First of all, does it not sound like he said that today and not last January? Because I needed that today. And that's why we come here to share because somebody needed that today. And I was, that was it. If this room wasn't for nothing else today, <laughs> it was for you to read that to me today. Thank you. Um, but, and I know that you'll get to share this more, but I heard you say in focused flow and the acronym that goes with that. So let me just flow into the next question. Can you tell us a little bit about your ministry? Um, so <laughs> how, how do I explain this? So this is something that, um, the Lord showed me, it has to do with a whole lot of getting our things together and not really going off of what the world says. Um, I think I read it today. It's in Hebrews 10 35, I think, um, to live living by faith. I believe that it says like that. Um, our submission and our obedience to God is literally like what he desires, what he wants. And um, a lot of times when we fall out of that space or when we fall out of, um, we're living like by grace and, and our fruit, right? We, we get turned a different direction or we get, we stop and it clogs us up and we might not move in the same way that he was showing us to move yeah. and there's a way for us to move where we're always like just in in flow with his spirit where he's telling us to go what he's telling us to do kind of like um some of the experiences of people in the bible when you read hebrews 11 and just that whole walk of faith. And so the Lord showed it to me when I was in the middle of a network marketing company. <laughs> and um, we have these things called daily method of operations. And it's like, okay, talk to 10 people a day, go to this, go to that, go to this. And it was like, kind of like, a, um, felt kind of like stressed about it. And I had like a, a sister prayer group inside of Facebook and they were like, you're not participating. And I was like, well, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I was trying to like really like attend to what they were saying, even though they don't have set, set schedule, you, you're kind of like doing the 10 things or whatever is on the list. And then they tell you, oh, it don't matter what time of night. If, they, if somebody reached out to you, go talk to them. And I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> so it definitely wasn't like following Christ. I was like, how can I do this? in that way and i think he's been like over these past few years he's been showing me that i still didn't know last year even when you asked me ever i didn't know i was like i have no idea and then he just showed it to me like this these past couple of weeks it was just like this is what you're doing and then this and see carlisha is in there back there because she's doing my book cover so <laughs> she is in the, in the back because she know we had a, had a conversation so <laughs> yes <laughs> that's what it's all about Okay, because I know that you um, and those of you who are familiar with Tiffany's ministry, it is called In Focused Flow. And can you read the acronym one more time? Yes. Um, so focus stands for follower of Christ under submission, eternally driven. Followers of Christ under submission. That's focus, eternally driven. I mean, focus, ED, eternally driven. That is amazing. And I, um, I'm just showing Ladora's comment from um, Facebook. She felt the same way 
about the journal share that I did. So that's why it, this had to happen today. And then I'm pretty sure it blessed others too. I, um, the way it blessed me and Ladora. Um, but is that the first day in that journal entry that you had gotten that name and that acronym? Is that the first time it had come to you or the first time you wrote it down? No, it's not the first time. Actually, um, when I, <laughs> this is a really long story, but um, I kind of like, I kind of have like a similar, um, a similar testimony as Ladora in a little bit, but I was like in a place, this was 2000. Okay. When Michael Jackson passed away in 2009, <laughs> I started calling myself PYT. <laughs> Pretty young thing, right? <laughs> I started gathering all the attention I didn't need, and I was just getting out of a uh, out of a relationship, and I was just like, "Okay, what am I doing?" And so, the beginning of 2010, I actually spazzed out while I was drunk and scratched up a dear friend of mine. It was a male, six feet. I didn't really know what happened. And he did not want to talk to me. And it just like made me, I felt a certain type of way. And then I was like, I don't want to misrepresent Christ because I was a, I was a believer at the time. And I was like, I don't want to misrepresent Christ. I know I was going through all of this stuff and I was just trying to use other things. So I wouldn't think about those things or whatever. And so I was just like, I'm focused Tiff. I'm focused Tiff. I'm focused Tiff. And I just put it on Facebook. I changed my name from Tiffany PYT Mitchell to Focus Tiff. <laughs> and everybody started calling me Focus Tiff after like in person. Everybody was calling me that. So it was just kind of like that thing. But I knew like in my head, I was sitting there like, okay, like focus. I'm I'm like, I'm thinking kind of like in a worldly sense, but God meant it in a different sense. And so mm -hmm. I didn't get that till some people like somebody sent me focus. They sent me that acronym follower of Christ under submission. It was when me and my husband got together that he said eternally driven. He had the ED. <laughs> if y'all are watching me on Facebook, you watching me shake my head side to side, shake my head up and down. I'm about to cry. I'm about to smile. <laughs> I'm laughing because um, look how intentional God is. And it showed up in front all the way from 2009. It showed up in your journal in 2021 up until a few weeks ago, you got the clarity or last week you got the clarity. I'm not going to say that wouldn't have happened if you weren't journaling because it could have happened if you weren't journaling because um, the Lord can reveal however he wants to. We know that. Um, but I would like to think that it had something to do with you putting pens to paper and allowing the Lord to speak to you every day, almost every day. Um, because the, the truth is, for and this is my truth, and so when I say the truth is, I'm speaking for myself, that we've become, I've become so entangled in life as it dealt with me and as I dealt with it out of the will of God, that when I started to desire to do his will, I had to become unraveled and untangled and it it was a lot it was a lot like i'm and i'm actually picturing like you know how you see videos of people's hair that's matted and you're trying to like uh, like little by little by strand by strand comb it out comb it out comb it out comb out the kinks comb out the tangles and it's like that's almost how i feel like my journey with the lord has been the past year or two um but especially since i've started being active in my journals every entry is like taking out another knot and I'm not even like fully untangled yet. <laughs> like we just have about maybe half halfway there or uh, maybe it never ends. I'm pretty sure it never ends. Um, so I, um, that's what I was thinking of when I was hearing you tell your story is that God really ironed that out for you. Um, and now, you know, you're going to help other people be focused because I met you through in focus flow, because my schedule was, and sometimes still is a hot mess. I needed to get organized and I was looking for, I saw all these other rooms on clubhouse where people were like doing co-working sessions for like 45 minutes and they were breaking for 15 minutes to check in. And, um, I saw that you were running a room and I was like, well, I know her, 
from KBN. So I know the anointing is over there. <laughs> so I'm just going to show up like br real brave one day. There's not even like, it's a small room. Like literally if I go in there, I got to say something. But um, I, I, I just took a chance because I needed the help. And um, so, but I believe now that I was drawn there um, and that it was a divine connection. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm just taking a look at the comments. Oh, <laughs> LaDora says she's got to get down because you're telling her story. Um, God was like, nah, LaDora, you need to hear this. Focus on what Tiffany is saying. Your stories are similar. And I believe that um, oh, um, that that's why we're drawn to each other, because I think we all got a few stories. I know I do. Just like the song was, you don't I have a story. You have a story. You don't know my story. But I actually feel like that's part of an improvement an area of improvement for the body of Christ is that we don't know each other's stories. <laughs> I'll help you get down, Ladora. Hold on. <laughs> if we knew each other's stories, we would get breakthrough. So in places where we haven't gotten them before. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and check uh, the chats. Um, oh, goodness. Carlisha, you are keeping it going in the chat. Man, everyone was calling themselves PYT. <laughs> you said pretty young thing. I was thinking pretty young Tiffany. But either way, um, you are focused. And I, I love that when you begin to speak that and others begin to speak that, that's what started to happen. And the fact that it didn't come together until your husband had it. Oh, that's a whole other that's a whole other room all by itself. <laughs> My God says Ladora and Nakia says, Tiffany, you are a blessing. Thank you for your consistency and sharing. Amber, thank you for your obedience. It's up from here, ladies. God bless. Thanks for being here um, today, Nakia. Um, and I see, um, oh, Natasha says she always feels welcome. Welcome, Natasha. I'm glad you could make some time to be here today. So, um, we are sort of closing in on the last few minutes of the room. I'd like to for it to, tr to try to keep it to an hour just to respect everybody's time. Um, so I just wanted to share with you guys my journal actually from this day last year. Um, and it's um, it's in this, you know, it's in this little notebook here. It's in, oh, because of my background, you can't see it well. It's in pink. And um or more like fuchsia or magenta <laughs> ink. And um, I'm just going to read some excerpts from it because this was when I started journaling to the Lord, but I wasn't yet practicing hearing from him much yet. This was just me getting out what I was um, dealing with in my heart and in my mind. Um, and after I was looking back at old journals, I was beginning to journal again. And so this time last year, I said in my journal, uh, March 31st, 2021, um, dear God, the last day of March in quarter one of 2021. Wow. Thank you for all you have done. Lately, I've learned about how the spirits of disappointment, fear and timidity have operated in my life and I've come against them in prayer. Um, I've looked at more journal entries and I need you to help me, help me get better at writing down my dreams. I've been noticing that my dreams continually have me traveling down familiar roads from my past, but I keep missing stops or making stops or getting caught in floods or and never making it to my destination. Or I dream about a boat that breaks down and is delayed and never stops at its destination. It seems like my life. I noticed there was a time I started our journaling time with gratitude and I wrote down what was on my heart for others. And I wrote about victories. I'm so grateful for these practices and I wanna continue. I also saw so many lingering issues. And then I wrote, I'm not gonna read them all, but I wrote down like a list of issues that keep, I keep occurring year after year, journal entry after journal entry, no deliverance, no breakthrough. I keep talking about it. And um, once I had gotten to the point where I was done listing everything that was still lingering, I said, it's time to see answers. I wrote that a year ago today, y'all. I said, it's time to see answers. Thank you for reminding me to pray. Thank you for reminding me that I can have a long life. Thank you for reminding me to pay attention to my body, um, to employ the presence of God. 
angels, the word of God, to use my authority, to use the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the dunamis power, God's grace, God's faith, hope and love and deliverance to make progress in my health and my finances, um, that you, God, want my marriage to succeed, that you love my husband too and want his heart to be soft and, and for, into us becoming more one to praise, to worship, to speak in tongues, to rest and to recover. And that was what I wrote in my journal a year ago today. And um, I'm grateful because we would be here a whole nother hour if I could tell you all the answers that he's given me in a year. And so um, that was my share. <laughs> That's what, That was my share. Um, that's what I wanted to leave you all with. If there's um, anyone in the audience who wants to come on stage and just share what's on your heart or what's in your journal, um, this is the last room like this. Um, I, I'm not saying that we'll never have another sharing room in Journaling for the Generations ever, but this room is a year old last week and I've been given instructions from God that this would be the last one and I'm going to be going to seek him about what's next. Um, the platform, however, is strong. It's going. Um, Tiffany's room begins tomorrow going through Luke and the reset plan. Um, Ladora will be back next week on Wednesday. I'm journaling through the idea of rest. Um, and Brianna and Malika will be back with writing intentionally in prayer and the remedy room. So the programming is still here. It's still strong. Um, and I will be in touch with all of you about what's next for this platform. But I just want to stop and say thank you to Tiffany for being our guest speaker today, sharing her journaling journey with us, sharing a beautiful entry with us. Um, please catch it on the replay in the Facebook group or here on Clubhouse if you... Um, get a chance to. You can even on Clubhouse fast forward to just when she speaks so you can hear it. I think I'm going to need to do that because <laughs> it was so good. And um, yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and just pass the mic to Tiffany to see if she has any last words for us before I close the room out in prayer. Well, thank you again for um, having me on today. Um, I am grateful again, and thank you for starting journaling for the generations because we do need it. We need it, and I'm I'm looking forward to hearing those answers. Maybe that's the next room. <laughs> <laughs> answers from our journals. <laughs> Amen. Answers. Oh man, ain't that isn't that what we all need? Amen. Thanks for being with us today, and also welcome to Marsha and Nikisa. Thank you for being here. Um, for the time that you're able to spend with us. It's been a beautiful room today. Um, we've had a share for myself, from Tiffany, and um, Ladora blessed the stage. Thank you all so much um, for even being active on the Facebook comments or in the chat or in the back channels. I really appreciate all the engagement for those of you who maybe um, couldn't come to the stage with a share. Um, but I know that you have something in your journals that's for someone else. So just the same way that um, Tiffany was encouraged to start her blog um, and because of somebody else starting their blog, uh, I pray that something here encourages you to take what's written down in your journals and share it, um, <laughs> share it with um, those who need it. So if all hearts or minds are clear, um, Oh, thank you. I see your message, Tammy. Thank you. I'm so glad that the room blessed you today. Um, all right, great. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody's messages. It's like as, as Clubhouse has evolved and as Facebook has evolved, and then when you incorporate StreamYard, there's like messages here, messages there's there. It's in the chat. It's in this chat. It's on that comment. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss anyone or anything that anyone has said. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come... And I lock arms in prayer with everybody who's joined us today to first say thank you. We are grateful that everything you say is true, that you love us the most and no matter what, and that when you give us instructions and we carry them out there for our good. And thank you for all the good that you have brought into our lives through this platform and through this space. I thank you that you have given us the mandate, the requirement to take the words that you say seriously, 
about everything in our lives, big and small, and to write them down and so that we have words that are inspired from you to share with others. It's because of this very same instruction that we have your word, God. So I pray that we continue to take this seriously. I pray that we continue to not forget what you have said to us to go back, but also to continue to just take some time to hear from you and not let our pages go blank, um, not let our pens stay on the desk, but pick them up and receive the breakthrough we need for every area in our life just because we've taken the time to hear from you to get the answers. I pray for everybody in this room and under the sound of my voice who will listen to the replay. And I pray that the scribe's anointing fall upon them in the way that you intend for it to. I pray that you will give them strategy and insight for how to share what you've given to them and when to share what you've given to them so that it's released at the right time to the right people to deliver the breakthrough that you need for us to have to be the people that we are called to be. Bless Tiffany and her um, ministry and in her business for um, the time that she has given us today. Uh, may you uh, pour back into her what she's poured out to us and how she's blessed us. And I pray that you forever um, have your hand to be heavy upon journaling for the generations, that it continue to be a space that operates from a place of purity, um, that fully is submitted to your will, and that what's produced here is um, for the expansion of the kingdom and for the benefit of your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, hang on one second. I was getting ready to close the room, but I see a hand. Who's, who's trying to come say it? something? Let me see, let me see. Hmm. Oh, okay, I see that there's a hand raised, but I don't see who it is. Do you see it, Tiffany? Okay. Oh, I saw there was a hand raised, but it looks like um, it's not there anymore. <laughs> so um, I want to um, bid you guys all a wonderful day. Bless you as you go on your way. Stay connected to us on all of our platforms for all of the updates. Uh, I love you. And I'm going to be closing the room here in three, two, and one. And we are going to shut down the live here on Facebook. Anything else, Tiffany? I see there's one person watching. No? Okay. Wonderful. Thanks for being with us today. I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. Bye, Facebook.